Well, welcome everyone. I see lots of uh, guests coming into our session today. Hi, I'm Jenny Whitener with Bridge Innovate, and we are thrilled to welcome you to today's inspiration series. Um, and today's speaker, our guest, Dr. Tiffany Bussey from Morehouse Innovation Entrepreneurship Center. She'll be joining us shortly and sharing some insights with us. So thank you and welcome to everyone who's joining in today's session. So the first thing I wanna start off with today is really a Zoom chat question. Share with us an innovation an art or an entrepreneurial launch you've been a part of. So think back and what has been your engagement with innovation or an entrepreneurial launch? Share with that us a little bit so we know a bit about your perspective around innovation or entrepreneurship. So if you could share with us in the chat just a bit about how you've engaged with innovation. Okay, so uh, Libby, certainly talking about their innovation center there at UTC. Danita, the automating of the performance management process, United Way, community investment redesign framework and their innovation hub. Excellent. Okay, so a number of you coming in with very specific background there. Isabella, low cost hydroponic system and innovation there. Thank you so much for growing crops high nutrition crops. So thank you. So good. We have a great group today. So thanks for joining us and sharing a bit with both uh, Dr. Bessie and me about yourself. So Clint talking about uh, some of his teaching entrepreneurship. Um, we're using games and polls and apps. Um, fantastic. Thank you so much. The USA SBE. So let's get going. Thank you. Welcome. We're glad you're here today. As I mentioned at the onset of today's program, we are thrilled to welcome our guest speaker today, Dr. Tiffy, Tiffany Bussey. Uh, Dr. Bussey is the director of the Morehouse Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center. Dr. Bussey and I had an opportunity to meet a couple of years ago uh, where we were both investing in gaining more perspective on design thinking and how we would use that to enable both of our capabilities. And since that time, we've done a number of projects together. We had an opportunity to actually go to Morehouse and run through the, her gracious uh, hosting, run a design thinking masterclass there. And um, it's been great fun to get to know her, work with her, try to uh, work to drive change together. And so um, it's exciting for me to welcome her today and hear her inspirational remarks. Um, Dr. Bessie, will you share a bit more about your background and um, help introduce yourself to the group? Sure, Jenny. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me um, on the on the program today and for inviting me. Um, I actually was going to tell the story of how we met right about two and a half years ago. Uh, but it is actually has been a journey for us. And um, I like to say we've been joined at the hip since then. So it's certainly a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Welcome to everyone that has joined today. Um, I, I often reflect back on one of my uh, supervisors when I was doing my dissertation in strategy and uh, Donald McLean, um, I did mine in Scotland um, and he was a Scottish guy and he had this way of, of telling you how, how certain things are done. And I, um, I remember uh, Donald telling me at the end, strategy is about people. It is about truly understanding who these people are in the organizations. Yes, you have KPIs and you have ratios and financials, but at the end of the day, it's about understanding who the people are and the stories. So my story, um, as we get on this wonderful um, exercise today, um, I'm originally from Belize. Um, but you'll hear a little accent for those that know me. They know that it comes out even more and pronounced as I deal with certain very hot topic issues. Um, but I'm not sure if everyone know where Belize is. If you know, please shout out to Belize. It's in what we like to call the heart of the Caribbean basin. So let me know if you know um, Belize. It's become quite popular in the last couple of years because of the cruise industry. Um, and many people visiting Belize is a wonderful vacation spot. Um, I grew up in, I was born and grew up in Belize, came to the United States as an international student. 
and uh, went to the College of St. Elizabeth. Um, it's a private uh, Catholic uh, single gender uh, education. You could tell I have a, a trend there, very early liking single gender education. Here I am at Morehouse. And I did an undergraduate in economics. Uh, from there, I moved to New York, worked a few years with Merrill Lynch in the uh, financial uh, business uh, industry, and then moved to Washington, D.C., where I would say I sort of found myself, um, really got into federal procurement um, and uh, went to George Washington University and did a master's, um, but started to understand and fell in love with small business. Small businesses, as they are an important part of the engine of the economy, saw where they fit into the whole federal procurement uh, process from the AD process, uh, starting and launching new businesses, and really got the bug. Um, I also met my husband in Washington, D.C., and uh, he's from Atlanta, went to Howard University. I did not go to an HBCU, but um, you know, we, we got married, and. Um, and like they said, the rest is history. We moved to Atlanta. Um, and then I um, ended up, uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit more how I ended up at Morehouse. But fascinating uh, story in terms of how this little girl from this Caribbean country, and it's not an island, so uh, nice geog geography lesson for today, Belize is on the mainland, it's not an island, um, ended up in the United States and um, as part of um, a beautiful experience. It's not work for me. I really, truly enjoy what I do. So I am super, super excited to share today, next slide please, to talk a little bit, um, not so much about the technicalities of innovation and entrepreneurship, but to share our story, our story at Morehouse, um, in terms of the, the college itself and the center, um, and some of the current challenges and opportunities we find ourselves in today, because I think innovation plays such a key piece in, in, in what we're, we're doing here and the important part. And the power of empathy Anyone that has studied or uh, have any touch with innovation know that empathy is a key important piece. When we teach our students how to start successful businesses, they must launch businesses that relates and answers a problem and the way you get to that is through empathy. So we'll talk a little bit about empathy and action. How do we take action? At the end of the day, entrepreneurship is about action. Really, um, as my students come to me and say, oh, Dr. Pasi, I have a wonderful idea. I'm like, okay, what action have you taken? Because that idea is just an idea if you have not taken action. And then what's next? Um, this is supposed to be inspirational, so we'll end on a very high note about all understanding what's our role, all of our roles in, in, in moving and um, understanding where we place in, in going forward. So next slide, please. So who's Morehouse? Um, I, I told a story of how I pretty much got to Morehouse and um, a, a little bit more about that. I fell into the HBCU arena, if you will, um, and uh, have worked, I think this is my fourth, um, and the wonderful gentleman of Morehouse, I think it was in 2004, um, really um, saw some of the need for this type of work, innovation and entrepreneurship. Morehouse was founded in 1867 in the basement of Springfield Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. The institution was created uh, to educate black men for careers in ministry and teaching. Today, over 150 years, we're located on 66 acres in Southwest Atlanta. For those that are familiar with Atlanta, we're about three miles from the um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And we're still producing men for global leadership. We're the nation's only, and I would even go out at this point and says uh, the uh, only one in the world <laughs> that is a private liberal arts college for black men. Uh, so we're very unique, very, very unique. And when we talk and teach, and Jenny, you and I know, and all the other instructors on the line, when we talk about strategy and uh, innovation, it's always, what's your value proposition? So this one is easy for us, right? So here we are. We, we are fully de dedicated to the education and leadership of Black men. Um, we have approximately 2,400 students uh, from 48 states and over 30 countries. Um, and we graduate approximately 500 men in 26 different majors. So this is, this, is, this, is, this is what we do. This is in our DNA. We're very focused. Some may ask, is it still relevant? And I would say definitely yes. We are still very much relevant today, probably even more so. So next slide, please. 
So where does the center fit and why, right? I, I, I said earlier, um, I came on board uh, about 2004, um, was over at Spelman at the time, looking and creating a space, remember my, um, my, my world is in federal procurement, so that's what I understood, um, and came to Atlanta and was really looking for a job. So I'm one of those accidental entrepreneurs, if you will, because this is my entrepreneurial venture. And I um, uh, sort of really found a space where um, historical black colleges and universities can play in the federal space. Um, there's a legislation called the Department of Defense um, Mentor Protege Program. And it allows for um, HBCUs, historically black colleges and university, to um, be a part of what is called a, a mentoring agreement with a large federal uh, procurement um, uh, contractors. And we come in as what we call third party providers. So we've been providing that service um, as a contracting shop, if you will. So I met the um, leadership of Morehouse. I think at the time it was Dean John Williams from the School of Business, who was very much interested in starting a center at Morehouse. He, at the time, um, was saying, um, you know, Morehouse having this tradition of social leadership, you know, of course, our most famous, famous alum, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, of tradition of social justice and social leadership. But at the end of the day, we cannot achieve that if we do not understand economic wealth and how to build wealth and closing the economic gap. And one way of doing that is through entrepreneurship. So it made sense to have that um, center. Um, so I came over in 2004 and started what I would say is my own entrepreneurial um, venture. This is my business. This is my baby. This is, this is, this is what I grow in with the team and, and have been doing it for 16 years. So I'm super, super excited about it. Um, I would say we have one main goal or mission it is to uh, really increase underrepresented small businesses and we do that in two ways one with students what they call internally and then secondly with uh externally with businesses in the community i'll focus first on the um, internal component piece which is here um, on the screen and it is really about creating curricula and co-curricular programs that foster an entrepreneurial mindset and i really want to underline that because it's important to us um, at Morehouse being who we are and we had to find our space on what entrepreneurship means to us as an institution because we cannot adopt or do the same thing that others are doing but find what really works for Morehouse and being liberal arts four-year institution we had to really um, focus on the entrepreneur entrepreneurial teaching that would work for us. And uh, for us, that is focused on speaker series. We have a great um, series called Trap Talk, which is focused on young entrepreneurs coming very similar to um, our students because it is about exposure, exposure, exposure for our students. So really exposing them to every minute that we can get uh, this whole idea of entrepreneurship and innovation in front of our students. They're coming from diverse backgrounds, many of whom um, have not really thought about, about becoming an entrepreneur. So we really have to uh, have them understand what it means to be an entrepreneur. Um, so the speaker series, um, usually close to 30 um, young entrepreneurs that either started a business while in college is engaging with the students. It's an intimate conversation. We have many sprints, one of which you have already mentioned um, in design thinking that um, was done along with um, Bridge Innovate. Um, we have a few coming up this year in uh, FinTech and blockchain. Um, and so we try to meet the students in where their interests are when it comes to our sprints um, and in conducting those, whether it's coding, AI, um, having them understand what it means um, to be there and going through um, defining it and looking at opportunities and, and bringing together resources. Mentoring and office hours, we, we hold those throughout the week. Um, students come in, we invite our alums and entrepreneurs from the community to come in and share and mentor the students again, uh, many of whom have some very specific ideas in which they want to start businesses. Pitch competitions, um, we encourage our students to um, participate both on campus and externally. Um, we have launched our own Tiger Pitch, which is after our own um, mascot at Morehouse, and um, that is uh, monthly. There is a 
um, three minute um, pitch that they come up and have to give that uh, elevator pitch. Um, and then we have um, study abroad experiences. I am very proud to say that um, four years ago, I launched um, the European Innovation Academy of taking our students as part of that program. Um, I'm so disappointed, it popped up on my calendar um, just a, a few days ago that we would have been in Portugal um, at this very time had it not been for COVID. Um, so for the past four years, we've been taking a group of about anywhere from eight to 10 students um, to join 500 other students from about 66 other countries around the world. And in three weeks, they go from idea um, ideation to actually pitching and standing up uh, an, an, a business with funding and um, everything. That program is well instituted um, uh, in partnership with the uh, UC Berkeley and the others. So I'm very, very proud of that experience that it has given our students and have enabled them to experience um, that. Um, I have ISTEMXC that's here. So for us, it's not only about the students that are currently matriculating at Morehouse, but how do we find that pipeline? So we go as deep or as far back as middle school. We are in our, uh, I would say our fifth year of um, this particular program. It's Innovation and in STEM, um, and it's sponsored by the National Science Foundation. It's one of the few, um, what I would say, longitudinal studies that's being done in terms of how do we affect young people of color to think about STEM and to think about innovation. And when we put together this proposal about six years ago, the idea was not only to teach STEM, but to layer it with this whole concept of innovation, of looking at problems, of identifying problems and coming up with solution, and then tying it together through using science and technology and bringing it together. We have, um, I would say we have touched over 120 students in this program. I am so proud to say that this year is the first year that we are seeing our first cohort of what was then middle school coming to college and we have a 20 percent um i guess uh, we would call it um achievement rate coming to morehouse so not only is it a pipeline system for innovation but actually recruiting process i guess uh, you will so i'm super super excited about that um and will be very intriguing to see and watch do they stick indeed to stem and do they follow through on innovation and entrepreneurship because this is a long game that we're in um, uh, for our students who are four years at Morehouse, we probably touch them maybe their um, sophomore year if we're lucky, juniors definitely, junior year and senior year. So we're probably only touching them two years. One of my goals um, is to really um, go back a bit and touch them as early as possible. So I am working on collaborating with my colleagues across campus to really touch our freshmen, for example, in this part of freshman orientation and introducing them very early to the this whole idea of the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, so, so yes, um, these these programs are um, are, are what we are um, uh, producing here in terms of um, the center. Next slide, please. So I mentioned we have two sets of customers. Those are internal sets. Um, externally, um, in addition to how we got started or the genesis of the, of the whole program from my standpoint, which was to work with businesses in the community and in the federal space, we have since expanded and we um, realized that our role of Morehouse and being in the community as a community leader, we cannot only focus inwardly with our students, but we must extend beyond, um, as our current president said, beyond our borders. Um, and so we uh, have several different programs that educate and provide technical assistance to businesses in the community. Um, the earlier one that I mentioned, the DOD Mentor Protege Program still exists. Um, we are currently working with about four uh, mentors right now, General Dynamics being one of them um, and several other companies. That DOD program has really given us a national footprint. We work with companies across the country, uh, deploying teams to help and address pain points within organizations and helping them to grow, uh, mainly in their uh, infrastructure systems. Um, we have Ascend Atlanta, which is, um, we're now going into our fourth year with the Ascend Atlanta program. And that program um, really is funded by J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, it is a national program and the idea is that um, every city in every state will be touched um, at some point in order to grow and foster small businesses. 
the model for that program is that there is always a uh, higher um, higher education um, entity partnering with um, local partners in the local economy to, to stimulate uh, and really grow the ecosystem of um, locally where they are at. I, and I will tell you that we um, just just finishing that um, our third year in May with that program, we have touched um, over 152 micro businesses, tech startups and small to medium sized businesses. Um, really created over 282 new jobs, which we're really, really proud of, and raised about 5.1 million in capital. Um, we generated about 15.4 uh, uh, million in new business or new revenue. This is what it's about. This is where the robber meets the road. When we look at really starting and igniting small businesses and making this happen. This particular program is based, um, or is fun really funded out of the research from University of Washington that has the overall uh, key facilitation role. And it's based on the uh, research done by um, the economist, Bill Bradford. Um, and I know my colleague, Quing Fang is on the, on, the, on the call, who's also had a hand in developing the research around this particular program. And what Bill found very early um, is that there's three components to really start um, having businesses succeed. Um, we often hear quite um, the, the use of uh, access to capital, access to capital. And yes, that's important, what we call money, access to money most definitely. But equally as important is access to management training, what we call the, the other M, so money, management training, and markets. Without customers, I don't care how many, how much capital you have or how smart or brilliant you are, you're not going to succeed. So these three factors, these three um, legged stool, as we call it, must be addressed. And that's basically the genesis of what Ascend Atlanta is about or Ascend um, National. Um, we're proud, like I said, go, to be going into our fourth year of that program. <laughs> Um, one, one other uh, program that we have just started is the um, Accelerating Growth and Activated Program, and we're so, so, so excited about that program. Um, we've partnered with uh, Bridge Innovate um, to, to come and join us in, in really facilitating that program, and that program is um, funded by Wells Fargo and our partners at um, ACE, Access to Capital for Entrepreneurs. Um, we are bringing in two cohorts in that program, uh, 15 in each cohort, and super, super excited to see where this actually takes us. These are going to be well um, facilitated companies um, very mature over uh, 500k in revenue up to about 1.5 million and more um, have been in business over five years so we're super excited to see where that goes um, and my favorite um, as a matter of fact, I was on a call just before today's webinar. Um, somewhere along about four o'clock today, there is going to be a press release um, that announced our very brand new small business development center. We have partnered with the uh, UGA Small Business Development Center that has the overall, uh, I guess, facilitation for the state of Georgia. And we'll be launching the 18th um, center at Morehouse. Um, so for those of you that are on the call, listening in, um, so definitely in, uh, we have a new brand new position for an area director and we are currently hiring for that position. You can find that uh, opening and more information regarding that at the Morehouse uh, website, www.morehouse.com. Edu in terms of open positions. Next slide, please. Next slide. So I think you, you, yes, there we go. One more, there we go. Yes. So what, what I wanted to show here is really just a, a pictorial of, uh, of, of our vision for a center in terms of the external businesses that we work with and the building of the pipeline in terms of the model um, of touching businesses at all stage. So we have those that we would call our stage one companies, about 100 to 250K coming in with partners such as Village Microfund, Access to Capital for Entrepreneurs and Atlanta Well Building Initiative. Initiative, Tech Square Labs, these are our partners and creating that pipeline. So they come in, start at that very level, um, hopefully grow with us throughout the program, or if not, we invite new programs or new companies to come in and join us at the 250 to 500K level. Um, and we have a very, um, what I would call tailored uh, curriculum to address each one of these needs at these various points in growth. And then our stage three companies, which are 500 to about five, five million in revenue, 
revenue, and then of course your five million plus, which we do see and touched in the in the mentor um, DoD mentor protege program. So for us, it's all about growth, right? Growth in uh, job creation, growth in uh, revenue, growth in capital, growth in access, and creating the community. We have our sponsors, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo. We welcome all. If there are others, you know, definitely come and join us. And then anchoring that all is the Small Business Developing Center and their network that they bring to us, not only from Georgia, but the national network that's there. Um, so I, I, again, this was just to kind of give a, a, a pictorial of what it means to, um, for us and the vision that we have at, uh, at the center. Next slide, please. So a lot has been going on. Um, and this, of course, in what we would call a strategy is, is, is the environmental factor, right? Um, what, what's happening outside, some of the things that are beyond our control. Um, we were all hit. Um, no one could have even begin to imagine um, what's been happening with COVID since mid-March. Um, there's a whole lot being discussed in the past couple of weeks um, around social justice and inequality. Um, what, where does the corporation sit? Where do organizations fit into all this? What's our social responsibility? Um, the shift uh, to digital very quickly. Um, AI and machine learning and automation. Where does that all leave us as educators, as entrepreneurs, uh, as, as individuals? Um, as, as, you know, we, how do we fit and what happens at this particular time? And I think at this um, moment, next slide please, we do have a question for the audience um, that will be there. Next slide. And so we will ask the question, given the current condition, what impact are you experiencing for your business? So I mentioned at the top of the hour that um, we, you know, everything is, not, even though we are all dealing with businesses and growing businesses as an organization, um, we'll first deal with how does that impact your business? And then we'll transition and how does that impact you as an individual? And so we see some comments coming in. So Danita says loss of clients and projects, most definitely. Um, so for, for us, revenue slow down, new rules and guidelines for sure. For us at Morehouse, it has been going very quickly to a virtual platform in delivering all, which we would call our products um, virtually, delays in marketing, um, Increase of impact collaboration, the decrease of donor revenue, most certainly, and, and, and we've seen the same at, at, at Morehouse. And how do we tussle with that? The need to engage with new partners and technologies, for sure, Jenny. Um, I think so. We are all having all this, uh, what I would call stuff, thrown at us. Um, and I know that, um, Jenny, you have shared um, in, the, in the chat with us the need to engage with new partners and technology. And we'll all struggle to figure out a new way very quickly and to use one of, uh, I guess, our favorite word these days is the pivot, right? Pivot in how do we do that? Um, and, and as we struggle with that, where are the, um, the energies and, and the guidelines or the playbook to do it. It doesn't exist because we're creating it as it goes along. But as I step back, that's exactly what innovation is about, isn't it? Um, it and, and we have Lewis saying we're seeing two clusters, those who are thriving and growing. That is true that we do have some business from there and those are, uh, and, and can adopt for the moment. And those who are struggling, that is so true. Um, a shift in remote work capacity and rapid learning for several organizations. Um, that is the case, and like I, I mentioned uh, for Morehouse, that we are indeed dealing with that um, great resource for the Playbook Small Business. Uh, definitely, um, we, we've seen a few of those. Thank you, Clint, um, and I know um, we share information back and forth. And by the way, for those on the call, if you don't follow Clint, Clint is a great resource when it comes to entrepreneurship and shares some very good nuggets of uh, knowledge that's out there. Um, but Jenny, any thoughts here in terms of um, where, where you see all this happening and how do we deal with this as a community of innovators um, in terms of um, how things impact our business? Um, no, I think what I'm seeing, Tiffany, and I know we, from a time standpoint, we'll move to the next question sure. shortly, but I think what I'm seeing is much of what I've heard from like Simon Sinek, you've been talking about those who are trying to wait for normal to come back yeah. will be left behind. Right, and it's those who are embracing and working to create the new normal that will thrive in this period of head ahead. And I think your point, um, Dr. Bussey, about being able to pivot 
being able to be agile, be in tune with your networks, being in tune with the market, so important. And that might lead us actually to the next question yeah. if you're up for that. Yes, please. Yeah. So, so yes, and so for, for us here, the, uh, the, this other question that really says, given the current condition, what are the things you are feeling or fighting with personally? And I'm gonna add the second part to it because for me, it is about empathy and how might we use empathy? And here, as you start thinking and reflecting on this question, I'm gonna share what I define as empathy or what I, um, for me, empathy, empathy is to understand and share the feelings of others. Um, but I'm going to go beyond that and, and, and really steal the word, words of uh, Colonel West that says empathy is not simply a matter of trying to imagine what others are going through, but having the will to muster enough courage to do something about it. Here we have this whole concept of action again and taking action coming, right? So again, as you think about the question in terms of what are you feeling and fighting with personally and how um, might you use empathy uh, of understanding what others are going through and not only understanding, but taking action and taking the, the will to take action and make a difference. Um, and, it, and, and for me, um, like I said, i um, not sure, um, a few weeks ago, um, I was really affected by what's going on and I wrote a piece really bearing my soul in terms of what's, what's happening and what's understanding. Um, and it took me a moment, it took me a few weeks to, to kind of get myself together and to really struggle and say, how may I take action? And where do I fit into all this? Um, and then I realized, you know what, it is my work. It is what I do that I must continue to, to press on, to, to teach these young men at Morehouse and to reach out to the businesses in the community and help them to, to stand up these uh, awesome businesses and to, to solve problems in society. So at the end of the day, I think we, saw, we see some, some coming, um, you know, comments coming in saying being overwhelmed with social issues, police brutality going into the world, but without feeling like there's something that I can personally do to help help, trying to create plans if I'm not able to attend NYU in person in the fall. So we have students just kind of, um, you know, in unknown. We at Morehouse haven't made a decision what's happening in the fall. Um, so yes, that, uh, that being uncertain, uh, that whole uncertainty, we are a wholesome bakery looking, wholesale bakery look for strong connection with Kroger, okay, and 50, and we employ 50 diverse uh, associates and we're diverse as well. Wonderful. So again, this whole idea of um, how do I, as an individual, find my, my voice, in, in really taking shape and, and doing something here. Um, Jenny, you had a comment here, how to encourage communities to engage in empathy, to fully, fully understand. And that's what we do, right? When we, as instructors, as educators, and the folks that we teach. Um, I don't know if you wanna add anything else to that particular point, Jenny. Um, as we- yeah, I, think, kind of I think so many times, like what we do in design thinking, right, is before we start ideating, the first step is really gathering that inspiration and empathy, digging deep and really trying to put yourself in the shoes of your customer or in your shoes of your community colleagues. Um, so before we let our emotions drive us into like jumping to solution, how can we build these stronger relationships and really understand each other and really understand each other's needs and then sort of do some of that, you know, why, why are these challenges occurring? What, how can, what's stopping us from fixing them? What's stopping us from changing the situation? And then springboard more into the opportunities that we want to brainstorm around. I think that's this very important point of listening, learning, building that connection to really understand each other and then exploring why why is this tension why are these problems happening and what's stopping us from fixing them before we jump into solutioning i think that helps us get to root yes. cause and it helps us to get to more intimate solutions that we can work together yes i would i would just add um to revisit customer development you know the steve blank method for um asking the right questions because that's if if you ask questions that evoke a yes or no answer they're worthless but if you ask questions that have them talking for 10 or 15 minutes they're great and i always refer people to uh mike fishman i think it's f-i-s 
B I or B E I N dot com. He's in New York, but he has put together a list of questions that are just super, and you just have to uh, Google his name and customer development, and, and they'll come up. Good point. Okay, Thank, thanks, thanks, Clint. And I think Jenny, we can maybe um, go to. I know we are kind of over time, and um, right here, you're you're on mute, Jenny. Okay, sorry. Should we um, continue yes, on to your comments, your kind of reflection? Yes, please. So, so I think um, th this is a great point. I've certainly had fun um, kind of sharing these moments with you. Um, and what I would like to leave you with, um, I know as we've all been in COVID, um, in COVID quarantine over the past um, four months or so, we've changed. There's no, no doubt about that. And uh, other than eating more than perhaps we need to eat and eating more snacks and gaining weight, um, I think there, there, there have been other changes. For me, I, I started writing a journal and kind of left it uh, at the part. But I'll tell you, one of the things that have really come to me is this whole idea of expressing my thoughts in poetry. And I thought that what I would leave you with today is perhaps one that really came to me over the last two days um, as I was thinking about this presentation. And very quickly, I'll share a few stands of, uh, of this with you, and, and it's called Finding My Fight. Um, fight, 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 shouted the crowd. Wrong one, a left, a right, a hit to the jaw. Little brown girl from Punta Gorda, Belize, came into this world, kicking and screaming, where is my place? Give me my space. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd. Round two, a jab, a hook. A hit to the face, off the college in the States. Education, they say, is the way to get to your place. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd. Round three, uppercut, left hook, punch to the leg. Undergrad, masters, doctorate, top of my game. Give it my all to win the race. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd. Round four, cross hook, backhand, double jab to the head. Motherhood, girlfriend, sister, educator, wife. Bleeding, stumbling, struggling, but never fall. Swinging and swaying, conquering it all. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd. Round five, right hook, left hook, uppercut to the gut. COVID, injustice, inequality, healthcare, education, income, plight. When will it stop? How long can we fight? Bam. Down for the count. One, two, three, four, and five. Struggling to stand, wobbling legs, aching head. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd. But why? Six, seven, eight, and nine. I must stand and rise. George, Brianna, Richard, Myron, Mason, and Maya flash before my eyes. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd, stumbling to stand, hand held high, fist in the air, black power we rise. Fight, 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 shouted the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I've had fun. I hope this was great for you, as much fun as I had. And Jenny, thank you so much for the awesome opportunity. Um, I wish you all well. I hope everyone enjoyed your day and Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bassi. Amazing. Truly amazing. Round of applause. That was wonderful. Thank you for your inspiration today, and we'll join you in that fight. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Thank Have you. a great day, everyone. Thank you.